Welcome to another episode of Funny Friday Nights. And this week we have our musical guest, Cam. We also have Mr. Mike Jones and the very, very funny Terry Dorsey. And you know, as usual, you got your girl, Shell T. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of Funny Friday Night. This week, I know I say it all the time, but this week you are in for a treat. We have the sensational sounds of our musical guest, Cam. We have the very, very funny Mr. Mike Jones. And to wrap it all up, coming to the stage will be Mr. Terry Dorsey. But you know how we get this here started. Y'all, let's go pray. Good evening, family. And thank you for allowing us to come into your home with another episode of Funny Friday Night. We are really honored to be able to, to share with you some laughter and healing through uh, fellowship. So we want to thank you right now and give thanks to God for making this all possible in a word of prayer. Father, we just come before you this night and we want to give thanks. It's been a long week for some and a hard week. But Lord, we know that you are master of our lives and king of kings. So Lord, as we surrender our all to you, we want you to just continue to move through our lives and move upon our lives. And we just ask for your protection and your plan and your perfect will for our lives come to completion. In Jesus' name. What's up, y'all? Yes, we are back. I mean, I, I, we're we're about to get going, but you you wonder why I got my coat on? Cause you know I'm I'm trying to be sympathetic for those that that's in Texas, you know, cause it's cold and and prayers going out to Texas, you guys. Please show them some love, help where you can. But I was looking at that weather like, ooh, no. <laughs> Cause y'all know we got these coats on when it's 60 degrees. <laughs> we in California looking at Texas like, oh God, help them Lord. <laughs> really? Cause you know, we go crazy when it rain in Southern California. <laughs> Shoot, I, I was thinking people were like, they like, you know, you, you gonna move out of California? No, I'm not. Well, they have earthquakes. You're absolutely right, and we're used to that. <laughs> we are used to earthquakes. We are okay with that. As a matter of fact, people are like, the next big earthquake, they going they, you know, California going to fall into the ocean. We over here like, well, at least we'll be an island. <laughs> but we do. We want to show some love out there to the folks in Texas. But right now, we're going to show you some love with this funny, please, Put your hands together and show some love for Mr. Mike Jones. Hey, about to have a good time today. I want to thank House of Worship. <laughs> for having me on today. I knew what it was. I just wanted to make it look good. We got a couple of things we gonna talk about today. And that is, uh, well actually not a couple of things, but one thing and how hard it is to be saved during a pandemic. It is hard to be saved during a pandemic because every day I wake up struggling, looking for a job. I Look at my neighbor doing his EDD scamming. And I'm like, Lord, uh, <laughs> I know he don't believe in you, and he's being blessed. And uh, these uh, three EDD forms you done put in my mailbox, is that a sign 
that I need to follow his lead, Lord, because you say uh, when the EDD checks go up, <laughs> <laughs> the scamming <laughs> comes down. And I'm just saying, Lord, you know I, you, you know my heart. <laughs> so I'm confused, Lord. I need you to talk to me on today because it is hard being a Christian during a pandemic. <laughs> I know a lot of businesses are struggling right now and they close it down because of the pandemic, not only businesses, but there are a lot of churches that are closing down because uh, a lot of us, especially black folk, <laughs> stop paying their tithes. <laughs> and a lot of preachers don't find out if you ain't got them in the building, it's uh, easy for them to keep their money because uh, you wasn't prepared <laughs> with a cash app or Venmo. <laughs> prior to the pandemic and I see all of the churches that's trying to catch up now and I went to one virtual service and he said man you can cash app us at this you can Venmo me at this and if you got zeal my number is 510 <laughs> and if you ain't got that if you Uber Eats in this area <laughs> you can tip me at, <laughs> at 10% <laughs> All I'm saying is it's hard <laughs> being saved during a pandemic. Uh, what else has happened during this pandemic? Uh, domestic violence has went up. <laughs> I know that's a touchy subject for the church, <laughs> but uh, we're going to be transparent today. Now, I don't condone any man putting his hands on a woman, but I must say that I have witnessed a woman putting her hands on a man. <laughs> <laughs> And if you haven't seen that before, uh, it, it, is, uh, it is a very memorable moment. So I'm going to take y'all back to a place where I witnessed this. Now, I got a, two sisters, my middle sister, but y'all can't tell how tall or how short I am unless I walk up to the camera. I'm going to look real tall. But my sister is about 5'4", and we used to stay together. She had a little boyfriend that was about 5'5". Five, five. I came home one day, and I heard a little bit of a tussle. So I'm thinking, you know, you know, I don't know. This dude is not putting his hands on my sister. So, you know, you got, you got to hype yourself up for a fight. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go in here at the Donkey Kong, this little dude. I walk in, open up the door. I see my sister choking him out <laughs> all in the closet. <laughs> and he light-skinned, so he turning red, purple, all kind of stuff. And I'm like, you know... <laughs> As a man, you know, when you when you see a man beating on a, on, on, on another man, it's easy. Hey, man, come on, break it up. Come on, man. Now, trying to pull a woman off of a man, <laughs> the, kind of, the dialogue is a little different. <laughs> come on, sis. <laughs> he ain't worth it. <laughs> you, better, <laughs> you better than that. <laughs> I'm going to pull my sister off of him. He was still in the closet all on her high heels trying to catch his breath. <laughs> I'm sitting here, what do you say to a man that just got choked out? Not only by a woman, but like a 5'5 five, five woman, you know? You right? <laughs> See, uh, what did you do? <laughs> To make her that man. I didn't even know my sister had hands like that. <laughs> I'm like, man, that ever happened? That's a wrap for the relationship. He stayed around for another couple of years, too. Man. <laughs> Came to family barbecues and stuff. You, you, <laughs> you can't get beat like that still. That's, that's automatic disqualification. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> I don't care how fine your mama is. If she beat me down in a closet like that, I might have to move to Arizona or something. <laughs> You can't show your face at a family function after that because you know she told everybody. You know. you know, I almost said his name for real on tape. You know, <laughs> no, she told everybody. You know. Yeah, he told me I, I'm going to have to take out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> no, ain't going to be none of that. It's, no. Ooh, it's hard being <laughs> saved. <laughs> During a pandemic, uh, I know a lot of people finding out uh, how dumb their kids are <laughs> during this pandemic. <laughs> but a lot of y'all fail to realize that the Apple <laughs> 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 
doesn't fall far from the tree. And I'm going to go ahead and put myself out there on that one because uh, during this pandemic, I got two kids. <laughs> my son is, uh, he'll be 18 next month, and my daughter should be 13 now. I'm going to take you on a little story. I helped my son with his homework one time and one time only. He was in the kindergarten, right? <laughs> and he came to me with a worksheet. You know, being a good Christian GED educated father that I am, <laughs> it's my time to shine. <laughs> so he came to me and he showed me this worksheet. He's like, Dad, I need some help. I'm stuck on the last question. So I took his worksheet. Let me see that, son. Looked at everything he did, everything was right. He got to the last question on his homework and couldn't finish it. The last five things, he had to draw a line to the things that rhyme. I'm like, that's my specialty, man. I'm a part-time rapper. I got this. So I look at, and I said, uh, rat and home. Nah, that don't rhyme. I'm like, son, don't even worry. Go on outside, man. Your teacher messed up. When I drop you off tomorrow, I'm going to let her have it. So I'm feeling good about myself and my education. I take the worksheet over to his mom, and I said, would you look at this? <laughs> this teacher's stupid. She think that home rhyme with rat. You know, his mom took that paper and looked and said, do you mean mouse and house? <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> you and your son are dumb. <laughs> now, I like that was the first and last time I helped my my son with his homework. So now we fast forward to the pandemic. My baby girl, I love my baby girl to death. Um, she doesn't live with me, but we spend that court-ordered quality time. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we should. So she called me up one day, and I answered the phone. Like, hey, baby, what's going on? She's like, Dad, I need you to help me get the hypotenuse on. Ooh. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> daddy can't even spell hypotenuse. <laughs> Where your mama at? You know, you know, she ain't working. What is she? <laughs> what is she doing? You know, <laughs> I love my baby girl to death, but I, I, I sometimes question God on that one. Maybe I should have prayed a little bit harder <laughs> for clarity <laughs> on how many kids I was supposed to. <laughs> I said, I don't go to somewhere for that but um that's the truth that's real life we being transparent it is hard <laughs> being saved during a pandemic i don't know about y'all but i thought um well i know my life was rough but i didn't know how poor i was until i got older um i enjoyed my life uh, my dad wasn't in my life i'm not ashamed of it my mom and grandmother raised me and i thought i had a pretty good life until i got married at the age of 19 and saw all of the things that you really put on a homemade taco <laughs> and then i realized <laughs> that, that i was poor <laughs> <laughs> Because when I grew up, <coughs> West Oakland, 10th Street Projects, <laughs> Oakland, California, when we ate a taco, you had the shell, <laughs> if you was lucky, <laughs> <laughs> had the shell, the meat, and then we had, you know, the, the slice of cheese and you peel it, <laughs> you know, so you can get that consistency from the, from the start to the end, you know what I'm saying, and a little bit of hot sauce and ketchup. Oh, we good. That's good eating. <laughs> fast forward, I'm married now at the age uh, 20, and I'm um, at, at my wife's house, and they making tacos, and they asking me what I want on my taco, and I'm like, hey, yeah, uh, meat, cheese, <laughs> some hot sauce, <laughs> and like, you don't want no lettuce? <laughs> Y'all got lettuce? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead and put that on there. I ain't no black folk did that. <laughs> what about some olives? <laughs> they sell that. That was all you can get at Taco Bell on the nacho. I'm like, yeah, go on and put it on there. We went back and forth for about 20 minutes <laughs> about stuff that I wanted on my taco because I didn't know I didn't know you could buy stuff like that shredded cheese taco, and then sour cream. Oh, <laughs> game changer! I'm like, oh, I could have just put a straw on this and been sipping this, but I didn't know they sell all of that. I'm like, and then I'm sitting at her house. <laughs> I didn't know what a pantry was till I was 20. I'm like, <laughs> Like, man, hey, you want some Oreos? I'm like, sure. I'm like, go on and look in the pantry and grab, grab a 
grab a pack. You know, I'm like, pack? That means y'all got multiple. Like, <laughs> not used to that. But then again, I'm like, pantry, so I ain't want to look stupid. <laughs> so when he said pantry, I went in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find a pen, like, son, I'm hoping there's something clear where I can see, or, you know, a little shelf where it is, because, you know, in a, in a project home, the pantry is the top of the refrigerator. And <laughs> top of the refrigerator, we had a pack of Oreos, like, it wasn't going to last over a weekend, let alone long enough to necessitate an entire area designated for sweets. So I'm in the hallway, and like, man, go on this right there. Mike, I'm like, I'm, I'm looking for it. I only see brooms and mops. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 it's in the kitchen. Like, oh, that kitchen. <laughs> you know how poor I was. <laughs> until I, until, you know, man, I'm like, pantry, and I'll open it up, and I'm like, oh, my God. They, they got Oreos, they got the the uh, chip ahoys, the, the all of it. They got the, they had the different, they had the hard and the soft. Like, <laughs> like used to that. <laughs> this is a black family. I'm like, I don't know, at this point, y'all probably thinking, uh, you know, did you marry somebody outside your race? No, nah, it's a black girl. I'm like, I didn't know <coughs> that all of this stuff came in a pantry, let alone a pantry. I'm like, oh, when I, when I make it, I'm gonna have to get me one of these, because <laughs> I guess I've been living my life all wrong. <laughs> I did not know that, uh, Black folk had a pantry, <laughs> cause you know how it is. In, you know, a project house. You know, even if even if Oreo survived a weekend <laughs> in my house, it would be because, like, my mom she she would rationalize and give out portions like it was it was drugs. You know, <laughs> well, y'all eat y'all dinner, right? <laughs> eat all your vegetables. Let me look in this garbage can. <laughs> all right, you ate all your vegetables. All right. Is a half an Oreo for you, <laughs> half for you, and she'd take the rest of it and it'd be locked up in her room. And she... <laughs> All the good cereal. <laughs> like, I'm sitting here, I'm looking in this pantry. They had, uh, they had, man, they had the good stuff. I ain't talking about the wick cereal. <laughs> they had, you know, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, <laughs> the real Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the real Rice Krispies. And I'm like, oh my God. I didn't... I don't even need no tacos. I could just eat this all day. You know, you know, you know, growing up project family, we we had Cheerios. <laughs> Cheerios. And we used to chop the bananas up if we was lucky. <laughs> Put that in there, you know. And I'm tight kid. Even even if by chance we accidentally got the frosted flakes instead of the re regular corn flakes, we still adding sugar. You know what I'm saying? We, I just that's, that's a rule. Like, you can't eat, you know, you can't eat Frosted Flakes and not add sugar to it. But, yeah, the, the regular Project cereal we would have, we would have uh, Cheerios was a go-to, regular uh, Corn Flakes. And uh, my grandmother, she used to, you know, rest her soul. That's, that, that, that's, that's my grandmother. That's my one. She taught me. That's my father. She taught me how to be a man. My, my grandmother, as I got older, I found out some of the scandalous stuff she used to do to me to trick me into cleaning up. <laughs> so you don't know if y'all remember the California Raisins back in the day, they used to have a little TV show and all of that, you know, and the, and the commercials. And uh, my grandmother used to eat these things called prunes. <laughs> but she would tell me, it, oh, it, hey, it's just a big raisin. So if you want one of these big raisins, go on out there and sweep the porch. <laughs> And cut the grass and, and and take out the garbage, and I give you about I give you three three of these big raisins. <laughs> so I come back in there, get my raisins, go out, and think I'm about to play football within the street for the next thirty minutes. <laughs> Be back in the house three minutes later. <laughs> and it wasn't until I was twenty <laughs> that I found out what a prune really is. <laughs> Really, Grandma? Like, <laughs> he tricked me into cleaning up with some <laughs> some prunes. Another thing I don't eat project project go to meal is grits, and I know a lot of y'all don't disagree with me, but I do not eat grits. I can't stand grits. I don't eat grits anymore. I don't even force my kids to eat grits. And real grit eaters know that hominy <laughs> is a supersized grit. <laughs> Again, grandma tricked me one day. 
Cause I, you know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't, and I say every kind of way, we didn't ate it every kind of way. We talking syrup, butter, bacon, ketchup, sugar, you know, and, uh, grits on the cob. We didn't had it all, you know, <laughs> all of it, you know. And then she tricked me one day. I'm watching Nickelodeon. Like, come on in here. I got a treat for you. And I'm thinking there's many marshmallows. <laughs> So I'm like, cool, I'll grab a big old gulp of it. Wait a minute. <laughs> this tastes like grits. <laughs> and she started laughing at me. <laughs> like, Grandma Cole, that's what we doing. But that's how it was growing up in the projects, man. And like I said, you know, during this pandemic, it feel like we going back to that. <laughs> so, man, I just want to let y'all know, it is hard. <laughs> being saved during the pandemic. I am Michael Jones. I hope you enjoyed me. Please follow me and my brand, Last for the Low. <laughs> <laughs>